Hello, everyone. Um, this is our weekly um, Your Identity and Christ broadcast. If you have your books, go ahead and grab your books. Uh, I am just getting back in from vacation, so um, trying to get settled. But go ahead and if you would please share the broadcast if you're on. I'm hopping on my laptop over here so I can see who's on the broadcast with us. Uh, let's see. All right. All right, there we go. All right, so if you're on, share, share, share. Okay. Let me get to my where I can see my comments here. So grab your um, your pen, grab your your Bible so that we can go ahead and jump into today's um, broadcast. It's going to be really good. Um, very excited about it. Um, if you don't have the book, uh, here's the book. You can actually get it on uh, Amazon.com. You can order it from my website, uh, Veronica Evans Ministries.org. Veronica Evans Ministries.org. Uh, let me make sure I have my volume up here. So um, please share. Share, share, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, last week, we talked about coming out of Babylon. Um, you know, as the days go by, I just see how prophetic and timely this book is just because of the events that are transpiring right now. And, you know, now is, this, is, is the time that we have, we've got to get, close to Jesus. And we've got to get to that point where discernment is heightened, um, that we're, 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 we're sensing, we're not moving according to just what we see, but that we are really in a place where we can discern what's happening. So if you would share, because this is going to be really important, um, um, what I want to talk about today. Um, like I said, last week we dealt with Babylon. So I'm going to start out with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for this broadcast. We thank you for everyone who's going to hop on and, and hear uh, what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Lord, I just thank you. I give you praise for everything that you have done and that you are continuing to do. And Lord, in this day that we're in, Father, I pray for eyes to see, for ears to hear, for hearts to be open. Father, that we're not governed by our flesh realm, our, you know, our mind, uh, our, 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 our souls, but that we are guided by the spirit, that it's your spirit leading our spirit, that you will remove the scales from our eyes, that we can walk in the fullness of your light, that we can be salt and light in the earth. And so, Father, we just thank you, Lord, that even in tonight's session, Father, we're going to continue to know what it means to be uh, your sons and daughters and, and to be in your kingdom. So we thank you, Father, for everything that's going to be said tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so if you would, let me know you're out there. Give me some hearts. Just say, hey, I'm here so that um, so that I will know that you're, you're with me um, today. So just say, hey, Veronica, I'm here. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump in so that um, we can get into the, to the nice lesson. So chapter three of your identity in Christ dealt with come out of her. And I, you know, the book does a really thorough, um, discussion about revelation 17 and 18, where we talked about Babylon being a political system, Babylon being an economic, um, and religious system. 
And so it's so important that we understand because when the Lord had me write about come out of her, that, you know, he's talking to believers and telling believers to come out of Babylon. And I thought that was very strange. And so when you think about everything that Babylon stood for, you know, um, it was sacrifice, it was idol worship, it was the pleasures of man, you know, and I see a lot of that going on even today, how people are erecting, you know, um, uh, demonic and satanic altars. And that's the thing that wearies me right now is that we are so governed by what we see on television. Because let me tell you something, the mainstream media is not your friend. They only they're only giving us what they want us to see. Like there's no way I can I can open up this book to this chapter and you will understand the whole book just by reading a few snippets out of this book. And so it's like you got to have the whole picture. You got to have the whole story. And so that was something the Lord taught me years ago was not, don't just believe what's in front of you. But to, to, to discern, to look at it, to watch it, to analyze it, ask questions and then pray about it. So God so God can give you the right perspective on it. And so um, so I'm just so leery because we're, we're, we're becoming so sensitized by what we're seeing on television that we're not weighing it in the balance. And it's that weighing and the balance that lets us know if this is truth or if it's error. Because remember, the Bible says that Satan will come as an angel of light, which means that it's going to be with flattering words. It's going to be, you know, uh, it, you know, when he tempts you with things, it's not going to be things that you'll be like, oh, I don't even have an interest in that. It's going to be something he knows is a temptation for you. And so with that, we've got to make sure that we are plugged in to Jesus so that we can discern the temptation when it comes, not if it comes, but when it comes. And so, um, so I, I pulled up a scripture in first John two sixteen that says, for all that is in the world uh, is, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. I'm going to say that again. First John 2.16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. And so that's a very paramount scripture because those are the three very same things that Satan take, tempted Eve with in the garden. The lust of the eyes is the fruit not pleasurable to the eyes. Uh, the lust of the flesh, will it not taste great? Um, and the pride of life, you will be like God. And so those are the same things, the same three things that he continues to manipulate mankind with. And so understanding your identity in Christ is going to be very paramount in the days ahead. And so you've got to operate from that place. You've got to think from that place. You've got to pray from a place of sonship in God that I'm not I'm not play, I'm not praying as a slave, I'm not praying um, as a vagabond. I am praying as a son and daughter of the most high God. So coming out of Babylon deals with our hearts, making sure that we have not set up idols in our hearts, making sure we have not made people idols. Um, so, and that is so key because what happens is when people, when we make people idols and something happens and we're devastated by the actions of that person, 
then we've made them an idol because of what we're saying. Oh, they could do no wrong. You know, they did it, you know, and that, you know, last time I checked, there was nobody perfect, but Jesus Christ. And so we've got to make sure that we're not partnering with things that are not of God. I'm going to say it again. You can't partner with things. You can't partner with events. You can't partner with people if it is contrary to what this word says. Because then what happens is we begin to compromise who we are and we compromise what this word says. And then we also open ourselves up to the enemy, which is something that we don't want to do. And so there's a standard. There's a standard that comes with walking with Jesus and being in Christ. But first, you've got to do like chapter three said and come out of her. Have nothing to do. Jesus said the tempter is coming, but he has nothing in me. There was nothing in Jesus that Satan could hold any type of claims to. He, you know, he, you know, Jesus wasn't tempted. He didn't fall into temptation by the, by the enemy. There was nothing the enemy could do that gave him a foothold within Christ. And that's what happens when we let our guards down is we give a foothold to the enemy. Am I talking to myself? Absolutely. Am I talking to every believer? Absolutely. This is, you know, this is a, you know, this is a work in progress. This is a progressional thing. This is something that as we're going through this daily walk, that we got to continue to peel off the flesh. We got to continue to put on the mind of Christ. This is not something that you do one time and one time only. And 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 as time goes on, we have to do it more so. Can I can I get somebody to just let me know you're out there? Just let me know you just let me know you're out there. So uh <clears throat> so when the when the Tower of ba- <clears throat> Babel was erected with the Tower, the Ark of Baal, when it was erected in New York, I was very concerned. Because you don't because you have to understand that when things like this are done in the in the physical realm, they've already been done spiritually. So somebody has made it had made a partnership, a pact with the demonic realm to erect the Ark of Baal and half the people didn't even know what was going on. And so that's another thing. You know, we got to keep our eyes open at all times so that we're not so that we're not deceived, so that we see and know and discern what's going on, <clears throat> excuse me, at all times. And that means staying close to Jesus. This is that time where we got to stay in the word. We got to study the word for ourselves. You know, don't just go with what somebody tells you. Search the scriptures. Paul said, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so we've got to make sure that we are that we're doing that. <clears throat> so the come out of Babylon, get the book. If you already have it, read it again. You know, I, I mean, I wrote it, but because it was so inspired by the Holy Spirit, I have to read it again because I'm like, did I really write that? Did I really write that? No, I didn't. Actually, I did not. It was the Holy Spirit who really gave me what to write when it came down to this book. So Chapter uh, four deals with in Christ. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, you know, with that, you know, it says if, if it is very conditional, if. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of people who will claim they are in Christ. I'm just going to keep it real. They will pray they are in Christ. They don't follow any of the, co- the commands of God. None of that stuff. But they'll profess that they are, you know, and so that 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 is how Jesus, you know, when he said many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. And he will say, you know, depart from me. I never knew you. And then he called them workers of iniquity. And so that's why it's not just salvation is the beginning. Giving your heart to Jesus, you know, your confession, that's the beginning. But then there's a walk that has to be walked out like a progressive walk that we do. There's a shedding off and a peeling away of our fleshly nature that has to happen. And a lot of people don't like going through that process. 
Let me tell you, because, you know, we're, 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 we're taught now, you know, hey, do your thing, be you, da, 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 da. But there's some parts of us that God needs to peel and strip away because, I, you know, I knew that when I became a believer, the Lord wouldn't let me just because I could sing. The Lord would not let me. He wouldn't let me join the worship team. He wouldn't let me do anything but study his word for an entire year. I couldn't join anything. Nothing. He said, you're going to learn my word. And all, you know, I went to Bible study and um, during the week I prayed and I studied. And and so there was some 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 grooming and training that took place in that year so that I would not become distracted by being busy, because sometimes we get busy with things and it takes us away from really studying and being in Christ that whole joining together that happens. So I did nothing for a year, but studied that word. And it still took a, a, a while before I actually joined the worship team because I knew that God wanted to, there were some things that he had to, to get rid of inside of me. That's why Jesus, you know, I mean, uh, David says in Psalms 51, creating me a clean heart because there are parts of our heart that's not right with God. And if you, and, and if you say there's not, then you deceive yourself because we all, we all have things. We all have, whether it's, whether it's bitterness, whether it's anger, whether it's unforgiveness, um, you know, and some, you know, some of us, they're those places that haven't been healed completely because of what people have done to us, because of what people have said to us, all of those things. And so, um, and so it's important that we, um, so it's important that we get in that place and we stay in that place where God can come, can infuse us. Jesus said that he and the father would come and make their abode with us. Like that's a, that's, that's a very intimate place because when Jesus was walking upon the earth, he said, my will is to do the will of the father, that there was no other purpose for which he had come. And he says, I only do what I see the father doing. And so the question is, are we seeing God do anything? Are we hearing God say anything? Because Jesus said, I'm only doing what I see my father doing. I'm only saying what my father tells me to say. I'm only doing what my father is leading me to do. And that takes a very intimate walk with God to be able to do that. Because let me tell you, I see so much slander going on on social media. You can't tell me you're, you're saying what God told you to say. You just can't convince me of that. <laughs> And so that's where we have to be careful because I'm telling you, the word is very clear that, you know, we will give an account for every idle word that comes out of our mouths. So if they're not words of edification, if they're not words of glorification, if they're not words of exaltation, then don't say it. If it's not said out of love, don't say it. If it's not out of edification, you know, and so I look at even how when people were wrong and, 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 Jesus dealt with them. It was in such a loving way that you didn't even know. It was like he dealt with that area, but he dealt with it in such a way that it was never condemning to them, you know? And so that's the part that we've got to get to that even in correcting people, even in correcting error, we can do it and we can do it in such a way like Jesus did it, that it draws people to Christ and not away from him. And I know that there are going to be some people who are just not going to who, who are just not going to come into, into the fold. And, and that's that's understandable, too. But what I want us to do is I want us to focus on guarding our hearts, because that's going to be very paramount in the days to come, guarding our hearts, guarding it from deception, guarding it from anger, guarding it from bitterness, guarding it from all of those things. And so, you know, we've got to allow God to give us the strategy in how to do that. And so sometimes it'll take you know, stepping away. I got to go listen to some worship music. I can't turn the television on. I, I watch I watch the news very little now. And it's amazing how I'm up ahead of everything 
and I don't really watch the news. <laughs> so that lets you know that you don't have to do that. God will let you know exactly what you need to know when you need to know it. And he'll always keep you one step ahead. And so that's, the, you know, when we when we walk in our true identity, that's the promise that we have. You know, God doesn't do anything without first revealing it to his servants, the prophets. So he's going to let us know what's going on and when it's going to take place. He'll let you know the plans and the strategies of the enemy. He'll let you know all of that. And we don't have to do all of these things that the world does. So if you're just hopping on, I read at the very beginning, I read 1 John 2, 16. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is not of the Father. It is of the world. And so we've got to guard ourselves from the lust of the eyes, the things that we see, the lust of the flesh, the things that we desire, and the pride of life, statuses, you know, power, all of those things. What profits a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Let me tell you, there have been a lot of people who have sold their souls and exchanged their souls. And it's like, you know, and, and, and once you cross over, you're still not beyond <laughs> the saving power of Jesus. But you got to really think about that. What am I willing to give up for my soul? You know, this is this is not worth my peace. It's not worth any of those things. And so being in Christ. Um, I talked about Second Corinthians 5, 17. If you if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So there's that metamorphosis that takes place in us. And it, it, it's a continual thing. Like I said, it's a daily thing. We got to peel off stuff every single day, every day. God is always showing me what I need to deal with when it comes down to Veronica. He's going to show you you first before he shows you anybody else. Like Jesus said, get the beam out of your own eye before you try to get the, the speck out of somebody else's eye. We've got to always keep ourselves on the operating table. You know, and, and and so that's how we grow and mature in Christ before we look at, you know, everybody else's faults. Examine your own. I do it all the time <laughs> because it's like, you know, God, I don't want to be I don't want to be hypocritical, you know, and I'm not saying I'm trying to be perfect. No, but I'm just I'm keeping myself honest and open before God, because the word of the Lord says, and you shall know the truth. And the truth is what makes us free. That's the liberty and the freedom that we walk in when we walk in truth. So um, so we, we are a new creation that old things, old mindsets, the way we used to do things, the way we used to treat people, all those things are passed away. Behold, we are new. We are becoming, you know, uh, I talk about the art of becoming, but in Christ, we are already seated in heavenly places. God sees us in our finished state because remember, God sits in eternity. There's no time. There's no, no past, present and future in God. Everything is right now. So God sees us as, you know, as a finished product. But in time, in the realm of time, we're going through the process. But Jesus is saying right now, at this very moment, you are already seated with me in heavenly places. And so if we understand that, then, like I said, we play, we pray from that place. I'm a king and a priest. So I pray as a king and a priest. I'm a son and a daughter of God. So I pray like I'm a son and a daughter. And so when you understand that, when you understand that Jesus said, behold, I give you power, you know, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. 
Can you pray from that place? You know, God, I thank you that you've given me power over, uh, you know, over all the enemy, that nothing is going to hurt me. Nothing is going to harm me. I'm not going to walk in fear. I'm not going to walk in intrepidation. I'm not going to walk in timidity. I'm not going to walk in any of those things. Why? Because, you know, you surround me with songs of deliverance. So that's why it's important to know the word of God, that you chew on it, that you meditate on it so that it becomes who you are. Amen. That you become the word. There's an infusion with the word, i.e. Jesus being the word, you know. And so when you begin to speak the word and proclaim the word, then like I said, you release that faith that becomes a force field around you. Also, when you are in Christ, he will begin to show you the plots and plans of the enemy. And so it is so important that we stay connected to Christ so that we know what's going on around us. And one of the things, you know, I look at things, but I also, I wait on discernment to say, you know, and discernment will let you know a whole lot of stuff. Discernment will let you know who people are. Discernment will let you know, you know, uh, when you think about the serpent, the Bible says in the book of Genesis that he was more subtle than any other creature. And so when the, when when people are subtle, when they come as, 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 as wolves in sheep's clothing, you got to be able to deter, to discern the motive um, uh, for, for, for what they're doing. You've got to be able to discern the craftiness of speech. You've got to be able to, to see what's really happening. Let me tell you something. If, if, if I took this water bottle and, and, and I put poison in this water bottle, but I offer it to you and I do it in such a way, you know, I know you're thirsty. I know, you know, and, and this is the best water on the market. You know, I come to you with flattering speech and I come to you, I'm, I'm all dressed up and, and, and I've got it all together, but my motives are not pure. There is no way that you would be able to look at me or even look at this bottle of water and tell that my motives are impure. But when you are walking in Christ Jesus, you, the, regardless of how, how the devil is dressed up, and regardless of the poison that he tries to present to you, when you are in Christ and Christ is in you, the moment that serpent begins to talk, you begin to discern something. You're like, wait a minute, something's not right. You might not even have all of the all of the uh, the the facts, but you know something's not right. And then when I start to try to offer you something, you're like, hmm, something's not right. He's trying to offer me. I don't really need water right now. God begins to show you how to ask the right questions. And so that's the place that we're in right now, brothers and sisters. We're in that place where we have to be, we're going to have to be able to discern not for what we see, not right in front of us, but we've got to discern the motives behind the scenes. There's a behind the curtain scene that's taking place. And God is saying that if you don't, if you don't stay close to me, you're not going to be able to discern the wizard behind the curtain. And so that's where we have to be when we are in Christ. So when he says, um, if anyone is in Christ, right? So in the preposition in is the Greek word en, right? En, and it denotes a fixed position in place, time, or state. So you're not just you're not just in the body of Christ. You are in a fixed position in Christ, right? So so let me let me tell you something that God just kind of gave me revelation on. So Jesus was saying that. We are in Christ. Like even before we were born, we were in Christ. We were in the loins of Christ. So think about this. Like in 1992, my children were not born. But in the realm of the spirit, they were still in my loins. Right? Because at the set time, 
they were going to be birthed and would and, and come forth. So we were in Christ before we were even born, right? Because Christ knew that we would come into the kingdom. We would be birthed into the earth realm and would also be a part of his kingdom. So we are in a fixed position in Christ, okay? It also denotes a relation of rest. So when you accept the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior, there's a joining and infusion. That is the spirit of Christ comes to dwell within you. God writes his law in your heart and his spirit takes up residence in you. So that which was in Christ now comes up and out of Christ, right? So, but we're still in him, of course, in the kingdom because we're still connected to him spiritually. We are seated with him like that. You know that, you know, it, it was like the Lord had to really open my eyes to see. I'm like, how am I seated with him? But I'm seated, but I'm over here. That's that duality of our our nature that we have. We're earthbound, but we're also spirits as well. And so spiritually, we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. And that's the place that we reign from. Because let me tell you something, God would never have told me that had that not been true. He said, you are a king and a priest in my kingdom. He said, operate as such in the earth. So that position was given to us before we even got here. So our connectivity to Christ keeps us connected to the Father so that we can hear, so that we can see, so that we can discern. Because remember, Jesus said that he's the tree, we are the branches, right? So we can do nothing in and of ourselves if we disconnect ourselves from the tree. I can go out there and break a, a branch or a limb off of my tree and it dies immediately because I have been, because I disconnected it from the source. So Jesus is saying in me, you can do all things, but separated from me, you can do nothing. So we are, it's a position, it's a fixed position to be in Christ. We are infused. We are at a place of rest. That means I no, ha I no longer have to, listen to me, I no longer have to wrestle with who I am anymore. Come on, y'all. I don't have to wrestle anymore with who I am <laughs> because Jesus has already, already solidified who I am. So it doesn't matter what the world thinks. It doesn't matter what mama daddy thinks. It doesn't matter, you know, because it's interesting that when you do, like when you give your life to Christ, and you begin to understand who you are, you begin to operate in the word, that there are people who prophetically can see who you are in the kingdom. I had so many people tell me, oh, you're this, you're that, and I didn't see it yet. I did I did not see it. But the more I, I continue to grow in God and grow in his word and pray and da 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 then he began to show me. And, and so I, I began to understand who I was. Right. And so when you connect with godly people and you stay in that word, God will man of begin to show you just who you are, the calling, the purpose for which you have been sent. And so when I did that, I began to understand, well, wait a minute. I haven't been functioning from that place. I haven't been been I haven't been, you know, uh, speaking from that place because, you know, there's a, it's a place of authority. It's a place of position. It's a place of validation. Because let me tell you something. There is nothing more. Um, the enemy is afraid of someone who knows who they are in Jesus Christ. That like Jesus, you don't have to. I'm not arguing with you about who I am. I know who I am. That's that's not up for debate. So Jesus never argued with 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 Satan in um, in the wilderness. When Satan said, if you're the son of God, do this. If you're the son of God, do that. No, never up for debate. But what he did was, you know, he, he knew the word. And so he didn't allow the enemy to use some counterfeit about challenging his identity. 
but he knew the word and he was like, it is written. And so that's what I'm saying. When we're in God, you don't have to battle anybody about who you are. You have to discern how the enemy is coming at you and then release the word on you. That's how we're going to get over in the days ahead. You got to know who you are. You got to operate from that place. And that is how we fight our battles. My battle is not, you know, my battle is not with who I am. God has already determined who I am. That's why he, when I wrote this book, he was saying, find out who you are in my kingdom. Find out what I said about you. Not even what we say about us. Because a lot of times we have a very myopic view about our own selves. We don't understand the, the gifts and the potential that we have ourselves until, uh, you know, until we're put in a, situa in, a, in a situation. And then God begins to show, see, you are anointed to do that all the time. You are anointed to, pre to preach that word all the time. You were anointed to lay hands all the time. You just didn't have the confidence in yourself. But what did I say about you? He said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so that's the place that we have to understand that God is calling us to. Because let me tell you, a warrior is never concerned about you know whether somebody um, validates him as a warrior. In his mind, he's a warrior. So guess what? When he hits that battlefield, he's a warrior. And if we're going to be warriors of Jesus Christ, we've got to understand that. But you also have to understand the strategies of warfare, because this is where I just feel like, you know, a lot of people are we're not where we need to be when it comes to the strategies of warfare. And, you know, a lot, you know, sometimes you know, we, we take the place I've heard even in worship settings. I've heard people say, oh, well, when you're in God and in your, in your worship, you know, there's no there's no warring. There's no any of that. And I said, well, no, when you're in your place of communion with, with God, there is not. But I love Chuck Pierce, his book, The Worship Warrior. You ascend in worship, but you descend as a warrior. I'm going to say that again. You ascend in worship. Or you ascend as a worshiper, but you descend, you descend as a warrior because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. But if you don't know what those strongholds are, then you're like a, you're like a warrior without a weapon. And God has given us everything that we need. Jesus said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> You know, and so that's what we have to understand that we're ill. We are in Christ. We have we have surrendered our wills to him. We've surrendered our lives to him. We have to understand that, you know, sal like I said, salvation is the uh, the first step. But but, you know, Jesus is the main thing. Jesus is our main thing. And let me tell you the coming deception. OK, so I'm I'm, I'm going to go a little like I hope you all don't think I'm just getting ready to go off the handle. But if it is, so be it. Mo the majority of you already know my walk, so you 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 know, right? So the, the there's deception that's going, you know. So let me say this: we've been reading this Bible ever since we've been saved. God has been showing us stuff, and I think I think what's happening is a lot of us are in denial with where we are on God's timeline. Like we are really, really there's some stuff going on that God has already prophesied in his word. And I think we're like, because we really don't want to go through it. I think we're trying to deny what's happening, <laughs> but it's not going to work. So like I tell my children, children, man up, girl up, it's here. We're at this moment because there's a deception that's coming. It's already here. Uh, in the book, I talk about, you know, there are many religions that, you know, I've heard people say, oh, you know, well, there are many ways to God. No, there's not. No, there's not. There are not many ways to God. They're, so so what we're going to start seeing is, um, well, God is love. And I don't know why, you know, you can't worship in your way and worship your God and why I can't worship my God. And we end up at the same destination. Let me tell you, Jesus said, there is no way to the father except by him. So I'm going to tell you, people are going to challenge 
your Christianity. They're going to challenge your faith. And you better know the word because you will be easily swayed. There is coming, there is coming, and there already is. So the Lord has shown me like many years ago, and you know, I know I might even lose some people watching this, but there, there are certain things that as believers we shouldn't partake in. The Lord, you know, he told me about roots and origins. Like you got to know what the root of something is, right? So we can't just come and say, oh, well, it's okay. Let's go and put a spare because there's spirits attached to it. And when you, when you, when you do that, you open yourselves up to various things. And so there's this mindset that we are all these per se kind of gods, right? And we can all reach enlightenment. We don't need Jesus. Um, no, there's really not a God there. No, you are God when you reach your enlightenment. Like there's this certain level of consciousness that you can get to and attain. I don't know. I don't know what they're saying you can attain. But this is, and, and so I'm glad I talked about that whole come out of her because that's exactly what it is. It is the enemy setting up the big illusion, the big uh, deception that you don't need God. You don't need, uh, you don't need Jesus, especially. Um, your God is offensive. They're going to, they're going to tell us that your God is offensive because I can't, you know, because, you know, uh, you, you, you teach that you can't do this and you can't do that. And, you know, so, you know, um, it's offensive to us. So all of those things are going to be thrown at us. But this whole consciousness thing, it's to get us away from Jesus Christ, to make us think that we are our own gods. You can't tell me what I'm talking about because I've already seen people fall prey to it, right? Who wants to serve a God with all of these things that you can't do and da, 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 you know? And I tell my children, I said, the reason you have rules is for your protection. God gave us this word for our protection. Not, not because he didn't want us to enjoy life. He's saying, don't do this. There's a reason why. And so the coming deception is that you are your own God or, you know, we, we, we're going to we're going to we're going to bring all the gods together and we're going to all worship one God. The one world religion. So it's going to be paramount that you that you listen for this stuff. Listen to what people are teaching Listen, listen to what they're saying, because like I told you, the enemy is very subtle and very crafty. So you have to listen to what people say. I don't care if they, you know, I don't care if they've been preaching for 25 years. It, it has to line up with this. It has to line up with this. And if it doesn't, that's what I, you know, we, we used to say, you know, you, you, you chew up what you need and you spit out the bones. But we've got to make sure that we are staying true to this word because, you know, they got us, you know, we're in our homes. The church is not gathering. You know, the enemy knows that there's power. You know, when we gather, you know, there's so many things that happens when believers get together. So, you know, we're kind of dismantled a little bit right now. And so that's why I said you got to stay in that word. Stay on your face. Stay connected. Stay connected with people. Set up your own prayer groups. You know, have some virtual dialogues, but stay, uh, you know, stay connected with the brothers and sisters of the gospel. People that you know are walking up rightly. And let me tell you something. There's going to be unveiling of stuff that's getting ready to happen. People that you were thought people that you thought were on the up and up. God is going to show you. I'm telling you, he's going to show you the wizard behind the curtain. And when it happens, you can't be like, oh, my God, this just can't be true. And believe it, <laughs> you know, 
um, because there is some unveiling that's coming. And so we've got to make sure that we're, we're connected to Jesus, connected to the vine so that we um, so that we don't miss the hour of visitation. Jesus is coming, <laughs> whether you believe it or not, whether the world believes it. This book has been so accurate. It has been so accurate. There are no other prophecies that have to be fulfilled before the rapture of the church. No other prophecies. So with that being said, so this journey with Christ requires uh, maturation. Maturation comes from fellowshipping. So that's that thing. Staying, you know, limit. I, I would even say start limiting your time on social media because like I said, I, I, I'm so, I was so hurt today when I saw, um, when I saw some comments and, you know, um, you know, we're, we're, we're in this race war. That's really not a race war. Um, I, the enemy is doing his thing. That's all I can say. And I just hope we don't have any casualties of war. You know, John Paul Jackson wrote this book um, years ago. It was called Needless, Needless Casualties of War. Is when we get caught up in stuff that we really didn't know anything about and we get and we become a casualty of the enemy. And so that's why I keep telling you, you got to see stuff for what's really happening, because I'm going to put it out there. BLM has been hijacked. It has been hijacked and, and it's very, it, 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 it's real, it's very real, it, especially to the black community, but it has been hijacked by the enemy and he's doing things with it now that we as a people would never agree to, but it has unleashed a fury on the on this earth that I'm telling you, if the prayer warriors don't get in place, like we're going to see some ugly stuff in the days ahead. And that's why I'm saying you got to see stuff and discern it for what it is and not be quick to jump on stuff and not be quick to judge stuff. But let God show you what is happening behind the scenes. That's where deception comes from is that we don't understand the behind the scenes. And so, um, so it, it requires obedience. It requires walking in God's word. You're going to see more and more lawlessness. Like that's one of the things, um, excuse me, that has to increase. That lawlessness will increase. Jesus told us that. And the lawlessness has already started. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, we close. So the lawlessness has already been unleashed, but we have to be obedient to the word. And um, it's like when I see people make statements um, or not statements, when they quote scriptures, this is the one thing that I see all the time. Um, I see these, I see all of these things and say, God is love, right? So, you know, you know, we shouldn't do this as, as da, 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 or, you know, about certain lifestyles or whatever. It's just God. They say God is love. God is love. And so the Lord showed me years ago that it's never about God's love for us. Like to throw God, it, God is love out there, which we, we, we all understand God is love. I mean, that's very evident, but I always go back to, but, but the Holy Spirit said to me, but it's, he said, it's not about my love for them. It's about their love for me. And his word says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And that's, the, and, and so, so the, the God is love statement can, can sometimes be thrown as a deflection because people don't want to submit to what the word says. And so we just, well, God loves, God loves, God, you know, I explained that before that when I tell my kids to do something, you know, and they don't do it. I mean, you can't come back to me and say, I don't love you. It has nothing to do with my love for you. It has everything to do with your love for me 
and you're following in instructions and being obedient. Like, don't turn this thing around, you know, and try to make it something that it's not. Right. And I'm very good. God is love. God is love, but God is definitely just. And that's the peace that nobody wants to face. I wrote down um, in Hebrews. It says um, Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed, you know? And so it requires our walking in obedience. In obedience. Is it tough sometimes? Absolutely. It's tough bringing this flesh under subjection. It's tough muzzling our mouths when we want to say something. It's tough forgive it for, you know, forgiving someone who really, really offended us. And, you know, in our hearts, we have a right to be upset. But I always go back to think about all the wrong that we've done. And God willingly forgives us. You know, and and it's that place. It's from that place. And it's all from the, also from the word that, you know, he says, if you don't forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your, my, our, my heavenly father forgive you. So let's keep it real. So if you can't forgive, then God is not going to forgive you. And I just can't have that happen. I'm like, I'm a deal. <laughs> you know, if I if, if, if I got to do it kicking and screaming, if, if I got to do it being drug across the floor, whatever, it has to be done because because the, just thinking. That, that God is not going to forgive me because I can't forgive somebody else. I'm like, I can't live with that. Like, I just, I can't live with that. And so my cry is, I can't do it. My cry is, God, help me do it. That's when we fall at the feet of Jesus. God, I need your help. This is difficult. I don't say hard because the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. And I'm, I'm not a transgressor. So I say, God, this is difficult. Can you help me? And that's all. I, I, I just feel like somebody needs to know that, that there's something that's, that's so devastating that, that you're really justified. You feel really justified in it. But, but, but Jesus is saying that I will help you to forgive. I mean, think about, think about Jesus was betrayed by Judas who walked very close. I mean, he was part of the 12. He was betrayed by religious folk. It wasn't strangers. It was the religious people who had him crucified. But yet on that cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so I think about that. You know, when I'm at that difficult place of forgiving someone and it's like, I have to, but God help me do it because the word says so. And that comes with obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God wants obedience over everything else, over all these things. You know, there are certain people that believe that you can do enough good works. Not going to work. He says, he wants obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice because if you're obedient, then the sacrifice will come. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we get it backwards sometimes. And so, um, so that, that being in Christ, you know, Jesus Christ was obedient. Jesus said, do you not understand that if I wanted to, I could call down a legion of angels and they would take me off this cross? He could have called down heaven to take him off that cross at any given moment, but he didn't because it was the father's will for him to go that way. And so when we try to come up with excuses not to be obedient, we, we've got we've to see the example that Christ set for us. And as hard or, or as difficult as it may be, the Holy Spirit is waiting to help us. So I like um, abiding in Christ means, of course, knowing and honor his, honor his word. I'm talking about being in, in Christ, what it means 
to be in Christ. I'm not talking about to be in church. I didn't say in church. I said in Christ. And so it's much, much more than being in the church. We are the church, but it's in Christ. So a big part of being Christ is being set apart for his purposes. <clears throat> the word of the Lord talks about we are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. We are a peculiar peculiar people. So we're not like the world. So we shouldn't sound like the world. We shouldn't look like the world. We don't think like the world. We don't even talk like the world. So why are we trying to fit in with the world? You know, Jesus said that we are salt and light. We should be leading and paving the way for the world. But we don't conform to the world. And that's a lot of that is what's happening today. We're getting caught up in, in all of these political arguments and all of these things that are ripping away at relationships and ripping away at the church. I'm telling you, I said that weeks ago, the great divide continues. The enemy, let me tell you, he's on his A game. And we've got to be careful, like I said, that we don't become needless casualties, that we don't, that we don't become puns in this chess game that the enemy is playing. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching friendships being severed because of you don't vote for who I vote for. I'm, I promise you, I know what I'm talking about. I promise you. I'm watching people sever relationships because somebody doesn't vote like they vote. Somebody doesn't think like they think. The great divide. It's what the enemy wants. He wants confusion. He wants division. You know that's not of God. Like my friendship with anybody has nothing to do with who they decide to vote for. Actually, don't tell me who you vote for. I don't care. Because my work is in the kingdom. That is where I rule and reign from. That is where my heart is concerned. God is going to move the heart of kings. I don't care who's in office. God is still in control. God always worked with wicked kings. Like, I mean, it's, it, you know, it was, it, it's, no, uh, it's no surprise to him who wins. You know, God, God is, like I told you, God is sitting in eternity. He's, he knows who's going to win the next election. He knows when he's going to win the next one. He knows what he's going to have to do to get them back on track. He knows what he's going to have to do to shut down so that, so that nothing harms his people. God knows all of that. So none of that stuff bothers me. But I'm watching relationships become severed because people don't think, you know, like you want them to think or they're not voting. That is crazy. That is crazy. Because if that's the case, we were never friends to start with, you know, and, and, and so then you got to really look at where are you in Christ if I'm judging you based on something like that? You know, um, and, and, and it's very disheartening. I'm, I'm talking about to the point where I'm literally almost in tears just, just watching some of the conversations that are taking place. We have our position on things and it's our position. Someone has something different and that's theirs. That's the beauty of being made in the image and likeness of God. We're not robots. <laughs> but to see people severing and the hatred and the slander and the bitterness and all of that stuff that's being spewed out across social media, God is not in any of that. And it's like, you know, we've, we've got to see it. We've got to see it, brothers and sisters or else we're going to get caught up and swept in it. I even caught myself being swept. I said, oh, oh, let me turn this off. Let me turn this off. Let me go, let me go for a walk. I'm, you know, you, you've got to keep yourself in a place of humility, in a place of love, in a place of, you know, respect for one another. I've never seen so, such disrespect, respect for one another. You know, I mean, all of those things are important. So um, so your identity is tied into your purpose. So everything you need is wrapped up into your identity. So remember, I said, you know, God has already settled who you are. Christ has already settled that. So you move forward in that. 
So as you set your affections on him, you come into alignment with heaven's agenda. God will tell you everything you need to know, whether he has to wake you up at night, whether he has to give you an open vision, whether he has to send you a prophetic word. What I mean, whatever. God will make sure. Remember I told you, you know, you don't have to watch all this stuff. God will let you know everything you know, with everything you need to know when you need to know it. Um, and once you come to the full realization of your identity, you must view um, and, and, and operate from that place. This is one of the things that Watchman Nee, which I, 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 I love his, his reading. Um, he said, the cross is where the death sentence for humanity was judged and a judgment was re rendered in our favor. So your old nature must continually be nailed to the cross. I'm going to say that again. Your old nature must continually be nailed to the cross. If the flesh is to be kept confined to the place of a curse, which is at that, the foot of the cross, we must be watchful always. The flesh must never be offered ground. Even when conversing with others, I'm reading, I'm reading in the book, even when conversing with others, you need to be on alert, lest in many words, the flesh is equipped to perform its works. So that, that means you got to watch what you say. Like we've got to be so careful with our words and what we're just releasing into the atmosphere. You know, because you can call certain things to happen just by what you say. Life and death. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And whatever, whatever we release, we, we you know, uh, 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 we, we bear the fruit of that. Um, the cross is where the victory was won. So, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, spiritually, like you got to see when Jesus went down, that's what baptism is all about. When you when you were baptized, right, you died to the old nature, right? You were raised in Christ to this new creation, this new nature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so we've got to continue to allow that to happen, to continue to bring the flesh. Now, Galatians chapter five, if you want to know if you're operating in the flesh, just go to Galatians uh, chapter five and that'll give you the rundown of the works of the flesh, right? Um, Galatians 5, 24 says, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So with that old nature, you know, you know, people, people can cause that old nature to rise if you allow them to, right? You start doing things. And I heard somebody say something one time about, you know, cussing saints. And I was like, the what? You know, like, and, and I get it. Like, you know, before I gave my life to the Lord, let me tell you, you, you what? You talk about a cursing sailor. I know y'all don't believe it, but yes, ma'am. And yes, sir. But there's something about when you really, when you're really in Christ, you don't even want to do that. It's like, I can't, no, <laughs> I don't want that coming out of my mouth because if I'm a representative of God, if I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ, how is that representing heaven? How is what I do and what I say representing heaven if I'm looking like the world and sounding like the world? And so those are, you know, the, the, the things, uh, like I said, Galatians 5 and 9 talks about the, work, the, the works of the flesh, but we have to, to look at on a daily basis. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. He didn't say, if you go to church, you're my disciples. Come on. He says, if you abide in my word, I'm telling you, people are trying to skirt around abiding in the word. And we're not helping them by teaching them and telling them the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now, there's a way to say it. 
but we can't continue. We can't go along with it. Yeah, but well, God knows my heart. Yeah, he, he knew your heart before you were born. Yes, he does. But that is not an excuse. So because I look at it as how is it that we understand these things in the physical, but it becomes difficult when it comes to God? You know, we expect our children to obey us. We expect them to listen to us. We expect all of these things. But then when it comes to God, oh, he knows my heart. So if, if think, I think about if I disobeyed what my mom told me to do and and I said, well, Ma, you know my heart. I know what would have happened before I could have got before heart would have come out of my mouth. I probably would have been getting up off the floor. Yeah. So if we understand that in the natural, why is it that we come up with all of these excuses when it comes to God? And so because that that will hinder your walk, these things can hinder your walk with the Lord. When you start, let me tell you something, when you start operating this in, I don't care what you say, after a while, it's going to affect everything. It's going to affect your prayer life. It's going to uh, it's going to uh, it's going to affect you, how you think it's going to affect your heart. Let me tell you, it you know, it's, it's like a cancer. And some people feel like, OK, well, I got away with it. So it must be OK. God hadn't struck me down yet, <laughs> so it must be OK, you know, but there are consequences. And they catch up with us. But if we don't tell people that, then people believe the lie. People believe the lie. And so that's one of the things that, you know, we have to have hard conversations. And, 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 and you may lose friends with being honest. You know, like I said, you know, um, I remember many, many, many years ago, there was there was a young lady at the church and um she, the, something was on her heart, you know, and she knew like what she was doing wasn't right. And she came and she asked me, I said, do you want the truth? Do you want me to give you what the Bible says? And she looked at me and she sighed and she said, yes. <laughs> and so of course I had to give her what the Bible said, but let me tell you, it, it was so profound the moment was that it instantly turned her around because I didn't sugarcoat it. I didn't sugarcoat it. I didn't say, well, you know, it, it takes time to do those things. I said, in the eyes of the Lord, this is not acceptable. And that's hard, you know, because even myself, we all do things. And it's it, 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 and, and, and the one thing that I always ask, I'm like, Lord, please, Keep me in truth. Don't please don't turn me over to a reprobate mind, because when we start compromising truth, that's what happens. And so keep truth always before you be be someone who always tells people truth, even if they don't want to hear it. You know, it's like I wish someone would have told me truth, you know, a long time ago. Then I wouldn't have spent as much time out in the world. Um, I, I, you know, and I can say that, but I don't know that I would have, you know, it, it just depends on the condition of the heart. But what I'm saying is one plants, one waters, but ultimately God gives the increase, right? So you planting a word of truth, someone else planting a word of truth, God then brings the increase. He, you know, she got herself together. She turned her life. I'm telling you. And we were we, we we were tight after, you know, but I just thank the Lord that I was able to 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 share truth with her um, because that's what people need to hear, you know, and and, and I tell people that um, this is what the word of the Lord says. And I share it with them. And then we and, and, and then I, you know, can I pray with you? God, you know, you 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 leave people hopeful. God can do anything but fail. There's nothing that you're going through that God cannot get you out of. There's nothing that you have done that God cannot forgive you for. You know, leave people encouraged 
but always leave them with truth, right? Because it's only the truth that will set them free. Think about this. You know, the enemy doesn't want people to know about truth. Why? So he can keep them in bondage. So if you don't tell them the truth, then you have prolonged their bondage because you didn't let them know the thing that could free them. And so that's what God wants us to do. So that, um, so being in Christ gives you the ability to overcome, right? There's nothing that we go through that God would not give us. There's no temptation such as common to man that God, you know, not along with the, uh, along with the temptation will provide a way of escape. But here's one thing I learned about the way of escape too. You got to take the way of escape. God will show you the way of escape, but if you don't take it, <laughs> then you still remain a prisoner to it. And so um, he gives you the ability and the power to overcome. You are an overcomer. Revelation 12, 11 talks about uh, in the days to come and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. People, you know, being willing to die for the, for the gospel. You know, you overcome the enemy when you understand the power of the testimony of, of, of the cross. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. So I talked about the deception. How people believe there are many ways to God, which I said totally debunk any, any of that. Your higher consciousness, your higher self, you can attain enlightenment on your own. Absolutely not. Only one, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. That is the word of God, right? So we have to make sure that we understand that he is the way, and I just actually just lost my train of thought, so I'm, I'm praying that God will bring it back to me. Uh, oh, so you understand. Well, here's my thing. I said, you
All right, everyone. Sorry about that. You know how um, you know how things go whenever. Let's see if I can get back on here. You know how things go whenever you're um, <laughs> whenever you are uh, delivering the word. So um, I'm back. Let's see. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Amen. The devil is a lie. Amen. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so, so yeah. So just share again. Um, that was the first time that it happened, but you know, we we all know uh, what the enemy tries to do. But so I talked about being in Christ is all about positioning. You have moved from slaves to sons. You have moved from being enemies of God to uh, to friends of God. And so um, so we, we, we talked about all of that. Let's see, being in Christ means being, being in Christ means being partnered and joined with his death, his resurrection and his suffering and his reigning. And so we partner in all of those things. We partner in his death, we partner in his resurrection, we partner in his suffering. You know, there, there are some things Jesus said in this life, you will have trials and tribulations. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, we have those difficult things that we have to go through that we share in the sufferings of Christ. There are people whose lives have been taken because of their, their, their belief in Christianity. And so we share in his reigning. So that's where I was telling you that the Lord said, you are a king and a priest in my kingdom. Walk as such in the earth. And so that is the importance of knowing your identity so that we don't have to, so that nobody has to validate who we are. So, you know, allow the Holy Spirit. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm reading from my book, Your Identity in Christ, something that God wants us to know um, today more than ever before. Um, I said, from my own experience, Holy Spirit is teaching me how to walk in Christ and release his words in the earth. Did you know, do you know how powerful your words are? I don't think as believers, we understand that. Do you know how powerful your sound is? Do you understand that when you are connected with Christ, right? There's a sound and a frequency that your words release that will shift and change atmospheres, environments, situations, right? Because we're connected to him. And it's not just us saying it. It is the spirit of God within us that is speaking. And when we're speaking and declaring that word, oh my God. Gosh, and that's what God wants us to, to understand. And that's why I said, you know, it's like we're, we're looking for everybody to validate us. And God is saying, hey, wait a minute. I've already validated you. Hey, I've already died on the cross for you. Hey, there's nothing else that can be done to validate who you are. And so we got to get that and understand that Jesus has already done everything. And so if I'm seated in Christ in heavenly places, that means I can reign with him. That means that my words have weight. Let me tell you something, when you rule as kings and priests, your words have weight. And, and so that's what we talked about, the creating things and you know releasing things in faith because of who we are and the position that we have in God. You know, it, 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 it's your heavenly position that outweighs who you are on the earth. You know, I mean, I'm a mother, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an author, you know, your, your wife, you're all of these things on the earth, but in heaven, you know, we're reigning, we're kings and priests and ambassadors and all of those things. And so that's the position that we take, you know, when we're here. And so we've got to understand that God is waiting on us. God is waiting on the body of Christ now more than ever before. You have the word of deliverance in your mouth. You have somebody's deliverance 
in your mouth. And, and it's time for us to rise up and know that. Like, you know, when you pray, you got to know that God hears you. You can't be like, I mean, I don't know if God is, I don't know if he's going to answer. I don't know. He says, ask and you shall receive. Either you believe that or you don't. Seek and you will find. Either you believe it or you don't. Knock and the door will be open. Either you believe that or you don't. But you've got to, we've got to get past all of the, the mind games that the enemy is playing. Because let me tell you, it's warriors arise right now. And so you've got to have, you know, a two-edged sword in your hand. you got to have the word of God in your mouth. And you've got to release that thing in the earth. You know, there's an unsettling that's going on. There's an unrest in the land. You know, there's, 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 there's all of these things because the enemy knows that if he can get humanity, let me tell you something. I already talked to y'all about frequencies and vibrations and I, I can't do that tonight. But let me tell you, he knows that when he can get you operating in fear, anxiety, panic, depression, you lower your frequency, you lower your vibrational frequency, and you become more susceptible to his realm. And he knows that. So that's why he's throwing all of these, all these things at us, all of this stuff that's happening and all the bickering and all of this stuff. You know, we just focus on all of these things. But the Bible clearly says in Colossians 3, set your affections on things above and not on the things of this earth. And what are we doing? We're doing the exact opposite. He says, set your affections, your heart, set everything on things above and not here. So that is where we pray from. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are in control, that, you know, let it be on earth as it already is in heaven. God is waiting on some ambassadors, on some sons and daughters and kings and priests to begin to pray like you are a king and a priest. He needs you to pray like you are an ambassador of heaven. You know, you know, speak the word of the Lord in, you know, in your house. Go out and speak it in your neighborhood. Speak it over North Carolina. Speak it over the United States of America. Speak it over the entire world. Because God is waiting. You know, he's, you know, there is a need for the intercessors to arise. The gatekeepers. You know, I have been, you know, able to. To, to, to meet and work with governmental intercessors. I mean, people that intercede on a whole nother level. And let me tell you, you know, there, there, there are principalities, there's powers, there's all of these things that exist. And God has specific people doing specific things. That's why I don't never, I don't, I'm not, I'm never trying to do anything outside of what I have been anointed to do. Because like I said, I'm not going to become a needless casualty of war. So I understand where my anointing is. I understand where my authority is and I operate in that place. And so, but we have to understand that God has need of us in this hour, that we can't lie down. We can't just become complacent. We can't be like, oh, well, it's just too much is going on. You know, we, we should be praying, you know, all the more now. And I'm even preaching to myself because I can get like that to myself too. I'm like, I got to get up. I don't care if I'm working from home. I still got to get up. I got to read my word. I got to pray because it's crazy stuff going on. And if the prayers aren't going forth to counter what's happening, then it only gets worse. Although we know God is still ultimately in control, we still know the two that the Bible is unfolding. It's unfolding right before our very eyes. And so if we don't do that, then we're going to be so, I'll say we're going to be shocked. We're going to be, um, you know, I, I, we're going to see some things that, that, that could take you out of here if your mind is not ready for it. Because there are, there are people who have made allegiances and alliances with the kingdom of darkness. They're, you know, the, the enemy doesn't like us. He hates us. You know, Jesus said, you know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, destroy. Let's not forget that. OK, he hasn't changed his mind on any of that. Kill, steal, destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So if you want the abundant life of Christ, you've got to be in Christ. I, I, I told you it's being in Christ, not in the church. 
Okay. Not, you know, not sitting on the fence, sitting on the dock of the bay, not using Christianity when it's convenient for you. No, in Christ, it's a fixed position. It's, it, it's a place of an infusion. There's a connection where the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit, they, they, they abide. They have come and made their abode with us. They communicate with us. Like Jesus said, I only do what I see the father doing. I, you know, Lord, don't let me, don't let me see anything I don't need to see, but let me, but, but let me see everything I do need to see. And so that's those spiritual eyes, the, the spiritual ears that we need, the discerning of the heart. I pray for discernment all the time, all the time. We're going to need discernment, discernment, discernment. Jesus, the word of the Lord says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And it's not that the knowledge is not here, but it's sometimes because we reject knowledge. Now, Jesus did tell the Pharisees, he did tell the Pharisees that you hide knowledge. You hide the knowledge of the kingdom. You don't want to go in, but you hide it from the people. And so that's why I was saying we got to stay in truth. Stay true to this word because God will reveal things to us and everybody won't understand it, you know, and and it's OK, you know. But as long as you know what God has said to you and what God is leading you to do, then you move forward in that. Um, <clears throat> so that whole surrendering, I talked about, you know, being <clears throat> the whole obedience, you know, laying everything at the foot of the cross, the whole forgiveness um, if you're going to walk in true uh, in true identity of Christ, obedience must be your highest out attribute. Jesus was obedient unto death. Unto death, he was obedient. So that's what God is calling us to. Uh, abiding in Christ means knowing and honor, honoring his word, exalting his word above everything else, above the opinions of man, above even your own opinions. God's word is exalted above all. All right. Um, it's that whole being set apart. You know, I said, we're not in the world. Uh, you know, uh, we're not of the world. We're in it, but we're not of it. You know, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh should have no parts of us. It says that it is not of the father, but of the world. So that we're not being entangled with these things. Your identity is tied into your purpose. Like everything you need is wrapped up into you and your identity. When you set your affections on Jesus, you come into alignment with heaven's agenda. Okay. And so we died at the foot of the cross. We were raised into, in, in, into Christ's resurrection. Christ gives you the ability to overcome. I talked about that. Being in Christ is all about positioning. See, everything is about bloodline and it's about position. The enemy knows that bloodline, which is why Jesus died so that we could be translated into the pure and perfect bloodline of Jesus Christ. And once that happens, then we become positioned as sons and daughters. And that's what's most important because your position is what gives you authority. You cannot operate in any type of authority unless you have a certain credential or a certain position. And so God is saying, I've given you everything. You are, you're no longer a slave. You're a daughter now, you're a son, you, you, you know, you're a rightful heir. Um, I've, I've, I've placed you, you're, you're seated with me, you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. So now you're ruling and reigning. So all of those from a legality standpoint, from a from a from a spiritual legality standpoint, God has already done all of that. All right, because God God even God obeys His own word, right? So some of the things we don't understand why, but we trust God because He's God. Um, being in Christ means being partnered and joined. With, okay, I already talked about that. I'm already, I'm just uh, reiterating. Um, what I said. So you are deeply rooted in him and his breath and his blood flows through you. 
because you are of his royal bloodline, which is what I said, being in Christ means more than just salvation. You have a position of royalty and inheritance. Royalty, king, inheritance, sonship. Now's the time to take your rightful position. So as I said, your identity has already been sealed. God's already, God's already approved it. We don't need anybody else to validate us. We go forth in our kingdom authority and we do God's bidding. What he's laid on our hearts. There are many of, many of us who have different gifts, different callings, all of them are for the edification of the body of Christ. And so what God is waiting on us is, is, is to, to get aligned, to, to, to get an alignment and, and to move forward. You know, there's a clarion call going out, you know, for the, for the sons and daughters to arise. And, uh, and, and, and so that is what God is calling us into. And so I'm excited. Um, you know, these, you know, we're in uncharted territory right now, but I'm excited because with God on our side, we can do all things but fail. Let me tell you, I wouldn't go. In, I wouldn't want to go into any other any battle without Jesus Christ. But now that we have Jesus Christ, we don't have anything to be fearful of. Um, you know, God is with us. He says, "Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world, even to the end of the age." You know, uh, all of God's promises are yea and amen. So you got to get that word down in your in in your soul because what happens if they come and and like I was telling you. Uh, your faith is going to be challenged because they're, they're, they're going to look at some of the things that we do and say as being offensive. Why? Because they don't, you know, the enemy doesn't want, you know, people, you know, he doesn't want people lining up with this word. So he's going to challenge your faith. He's going to, you know, he's going to come and say we're offensive because we don't, we don't, um, you know, there's certain things we believe and certain things we don't, certain things we support. Let me say that according to the word. So now we're going to become offensive. Um, and so that's where, you know, we have to take our stand, of, of course, in, in what the word, you know, that's why I said, this is the word. Um, and hold fast to our profession of faith and know that God's going to fill our mouth at the right time with the right words. Uh, we're not going to back up. We're not going to back down. Uh, we're going to guard our hearts. We're going to guard our minds. You know, we're going to be careful of what we say. You know, we're going to let our speech be with grace, seasoned with salt. Um, what did I say? I said royalty was kings. And I said inheritance. Inheritance is sonship. So um, if there are any prayer requests, if you could put them, um, you can put them in the chat. I'm going to pray pray for you real quick, but I thank you so much for joining in. And we know what the disruption was all about. You know, the enemy always comes in and tries to disrupt stuff. I talked a little bit at the beginning. So if you missed the beginning, go back and listen. I talked to a little bit about come out of her talking about Babylon and, and, you know, mystery. The Bible talks about mystery Babylon and it's a, it's a, it's a religious system. It's a political system. And there are many things that we're going to start seeing that's going to, you know, the enemy is going to start trying to, you know, uh, combine the religions and, you know, all these kind of things that are going to be going on. But God has already told us that. See, that's the thing about it. We already know. <laughs> so we shouldn't be deceived. You know, he says, you know, lawlessness is going to abound. He also says the love of many is going to wax cold or grow cold. And we can see that today, that the love for our fellow mankind is, is is waxing and growing colder and colder each day. But when we stay in Christ, when we stay infused with him, abiding in his word and fellowshipping and, and, and studying and praying and fasting, you know, uh, now that you're not, um, if you're not gathering in your churches, get your, get your, your juice and your, your crackers. You know, there's power in communion. Maybe I'll even do a teaching on the power of communion. You know, um, we don't do that. 
what is, I, I can't, I'll come back with the teaching of it. It's called something like transubstantiation or something where we believe that, you know, the cracker is the body and the juice is the blood. No, we don't do all that. But there's power in it. Jesus said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So there's, and so, like I said, these, these spiritual things that are so powerful in the spirit, sometimes because we don't understand them, we don't do them or we take them lightly. And so I want us to make sure that, you know, a lot of these things that God is calling us into this day, that, that we really take heed to them. We stay close. So chapter four in Christ understanding what that means, that position that we have in Christ that solidifies who we are in his kingdom. All right. So uh, let's see. I have a prayer request. Summer's asking for prayer for her husband, freedom from depression. Okay. I will do that. Um, let's see. I I don't want to mess up your name. Um Let's see, I'm competing in Alcomet and it's very easy to get consumed with comparison and everything that's going on. So prayer to stay focused and infused in Christ. Amen. All right. Any other prayer requests before I begin um, to lift up these requests? Because I'm, I'm big on prayer. Like, I, yeah. Um, because I, I, I definitely believe in, in the body of Christ being free. So if you have loved ones um, who need prayer, who need deliverance, and, and, you know, and, and check on uh, on people because, you know, people haven't been, been haven't been able to get to church. So it's like we can't put our. So, you know, a lot of times when we're in gatherings, we can look at people and, and, and tell if something's not going right. But we're in a in a day where now we can't even put our eyes on people. So we've, we've got to be a little bit more diligent with, um, with with keeping up and checking in to make sure that people are OK. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Father, for this teaching today, tonight. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus solidifying and securing our position in him, that being uh, we are translated into the pure and perfect bloodline of Jesus Christ, that, you know, all of those um, uh, genetic uh, anomalies that were written into our DNA before we gave our lives, Father, that the blood of Jesus wiped them clean. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are now in right position and in right fellowship with Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are infusing us into you. Father, that we will abide in your word and, 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 uh, and allow you to abide in us. Father, we thank you. We're asking, Father, for prayer for, um, for Anna, no, Summer's husband, um, freedom from depression. So, Father, we just, we just speak, uh, speak freedom. I speak shalom over him. Summer, I just want you uh, tonight, and I want you to say the word shalom because shalom means more than just peace. It means tranquility. It means wholeness. I want you to just begin to speak shalom in your house and shalom over his mind. But Father, we lift up Summer's husband. We speak shalom, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Father, we just come against any of the uh, any tormenting spirits that may be torting, tormenting his mind. Father, you know, we, we come against the spirit of confusion. Father, we just, we just bind the spirit of depression. Father, we just pray, Father, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to just speak to his heart. Father, that he will feel your love, Father, like never, never, never before. And so, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for it is in you that we live and we move and we have our being. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the uh, the, the the author and the finisher of our faith. So we thank you, Lord, for the deliverance of her husband, Father, for uh, deliverance from this spirit of depression. We declare it to be so right now in Jesus' name. We bind that spirit of, of depression and we command that spirit to leave him in Jesus' name never to return again, Father. So I thank you for the spirit of, of, of healing and health and wholeness, Father, that's going to, to, to come over him. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, for my sister who is going to be competing in a pageant and she just wants to stay, you know, focused because of all of the comparisons and everything that goes on in environments like that, Lord, that she will stay focused on you and infused in you and in 
your word. So Father, we thank you, Lord. You said that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So Father, we just thank you, Lord, that even though we participate in the things of the world, that we do not become of the world. And so Father, we thank you, Lord, for separating her and keeping her separated and set apart for your glory, that even in this pageant, Father, that you will give her words to speak to the ladies, to speak to the contestants, Lord, words of edification. Father, I just pray, Father, that they, you know, that because of her witness, that they would even be somebody who's going to get saved in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you're always doing your work. And so, Father, we thank you, Father. We um lift up Anna. Um, she says that she had battled depression and was suicidal, but now she is free. She wrote a 31 day devotional telling her story. So father, we just, we celebrate with Anna. God, we give you glory and praise for her deliverance in Jesus name. And God, we thank you, Lord, that your word says that whom the son sets free is free indeed. And so we thank you, Lord, for her continued freedom, that this spirit will not try to return. This spirit will not try to get a foothold again. We just thank you for the power of Jesus Christ rest ruling and abiding over her. And God, now I just speak, Father, even to um, for even for this this 31 day devotional, Father, that you would just open up doors, put it on bookshelves, let it go, you know, uh, worldwide, let it go viral in Jesus name. That you will continue to give her strategies, even on her writings, because sometimes we have to go through these things, Lord, in order to help other people become delivered. So we thank you, Lord, for delivering her and now giving her the opportunity to share her story so that somebody else can be delivered. So Father, I thank you, Lord. I give you glory, Father, for everyone who watched tonight. The Father, that Father, that you will bless them, that you will give them sweet sleep. Father, that you will bless the remainder of their week and their weekend. Father, that you will keep them shielded and protected with all of the things that's going on you know, with, with, with COVID and, and all of the regulations and mandates, God, that you will keep us in perfect peace. God, that we're gonna not going to walk around here fearful. We know you got us. And so for that, we thank you, Lord. I just declare health and healing and wholeness over everyone because you said, I wish of all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So I pray, Father, for the prosperity of souls, the prosperity of physical bodies. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I will be back again uh, next week. We are going to be on chapter five, which will be sonship, your kingdom inheritance. And let me tell you, there was this is some powerful nuggets in the word of God. Oh my God. Um, we're gonna, you know, and, and I talked about, you know, king, king, uh being kingly um or royalty uh, equals kingship and inheritance represents sonship. So I'm going to explain to you what your sonship means and what your inheritance means. And I'm telling you once I'm telling you once you get a glimpse and once you understand who you are in God, oh my God, it's just such freedom. It's such joy and excitement that God doesn't see me like everybody else sees me. God doesn't even see me like I see myself. And that's the beauty of it, of being able to see out of God's eyes what he thinks about you. So that will be next week, chapter five, Sonship, Your Kingdom Inheritance. If you don't have the book, get it. I encourage you to get it. If you already have it, sow it into somebody else's life. You know, we got more, more than enough time now to read. <laughs> so sow it into somebody's life. Um, uh, I'll put the broadcast out there. So share the broadcast. Um, once I put it out there, invite, you know, do watch parties, do all of these things. Cause you know, my desire is just to see people free and just people walking, just people walking in their true identity. Because like I said, with all this race stuff going on, people looking for other, other people to validate them and all this kind of stuff, it has nothing to do with any of that, because if God doesn't validate you, nothing, nobody, nothing else matters. <laughs>
Nothing else matters. Amen, Anna. Thank you for purchasing the book. So I'll see you next week. We will talk about sonship and your kingdom inheritance. So take care. I love you all and I'll see you next week.